The internet has come a long way since its inception and has changed the way we communicate, access information, and engage with the world. With the advent of new technologies and innovations, a new era of the internet has emerged, known as Web3. This new iteration of the web has the potential to completely transform the way we interact and engage with the online world. As internet users, it is important to understand the differences between Web1 and Web2, and Web3 and how they can affect our daily lives. Whether you use the internet for work, communication, entertainment, or education, understanding the differences between these two versions of the web can help you make informed decisions about how you engage with the online world. In this script, we will explore the key differences between Web 1 and Web 2 and Web 3 and how they can impact the way you use the internet. Whether you're a student, a professional, a parent, or just someone who wants to stay informed, this information is relevant and important to know. So, Let's dive into generations of web and see what makes them so different from one another. Before we dive into the differences between Web 2 and Web 3, let's first take a step back and understand what Web 1 is. Between 1991 and 2004, the first generation of the Internet existed, and this version of the Internet is known as Web 1. Web 1 was a read-only web and was mainly used as a stream for information, allowing the broadcast of information on static pages. With Web1, users could search for information and just read it, hence the term read-only web. Unlike the web we see today, Web1.0 web pages were joined using hyperlinks with no additional visuals, interactivity, text forms, or control. At this time, there were very few content creators and lots of content consumers. These readers had no option of interacting with the sites, and there were lots of personal sites. The web was still in its early stages, and the concept of a dynamic and interactive web was not yet a reality. It's important to understand Web 1 because it serves as the foundation for the current web we have today and highlights the evolution and advancements in technology that have taken place over the past few decades. In this segment, we will take a closer look at some of the key features of Web 1.0. Static Pages One of the defining features of Web 1.0 was that most of the web pages were built with static HTML pages. This means that the pages were primarily used to display information and had no interactive features. Website Storage Another key difference between Web 1.0 and the web we see today is how websites were stored. While today we use databases to store website content, during the Web 1.0 era, website content was stored directly in the website files, without a separate database. Website layout and combination of content. When it came to designing web pages during the Web 1.0 era, most of the styling was done directly on the HTML page. This was an acceptable web practice at the time, but modern websites now use external style sheets to style the web pages. Web browsers support for proprietary HTML tags. Web 1.0 browsers offered support for proprietary HTML tags, which resulted in compatibility problems for some websites. This was because each browser tried to stand out from the others, leading to the use of different proprietary tags. As a result, users had to use a specific browser to visit some websites. Guestbooks. Finally, Web 1.0 pages often had a page called the guestbook page. Here, users could leave comments, which would be added to the page, rather than the content page. These are just a few of the key features of Web 1.0 that highlight how the web has evolved over time. Understanding the differences between Web 1.0 and the web we see today can help us appreciate the advancements in technology and the impact they have had on our lives. Next, we move on to Web 2.0. Web 2.0 marked a major turning point in the history of the Internet. It marked a shift from the read-only web of Web 1.0 to a more interactive, dynamic and user-centered web. So, what exactly is Web 2.0? Imagine a web where users can not only consume information, but also actively participate in creating and sharing it. 
A web where user-generated content is king. That's the essence of Web 2.0. With the advent of Web 2.0, the internet became a platform for collaboration, communication, and social interaction. This new era of the web brought about some key features that set it apart from Web 1.0. Social networking. One of the most significant changes brought about by Web 2.0 was the rise of social networking sites. Sites like Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn allow users to connect with others, share information, and collaborate in real-time. User-generated content. Another defining feature of Web 2.0 is the rise of user-generated content. With the help of tools like blogs, wikis, and podcasts, users can now create share, and distribute their own content with ease. Interactivity. Web 2.0 also brought about increased interactivity on the web. Users can now actively engage with web pages and applications through features like comments, ratings, and voting. Rich media. Finally, Web 2.0 saw the rise of rich media on the web. With the advent of technologies like Adobe Flash and HTML5, Web pages are now more visually appealing and engaging than ever before. In conclusion, Web 2.0 has transformed the internet from a read only platform to a dynamic, interactive, and user centered web. With the rise of user generated content, social networking, increased interactivity, and rich media, Web 2.0 has made the internet a more connected and collaborative place. And it's this user-centered approach that sets it apart from its predecessor, Web 1.0. Next, we are going to talk about Web 3.0. But before that, please like our video and subscribe to our channel so we will be motivated to create more content like this. Web 3.0, the next generation of the internet, is here and it's set to revolutionize the way we interact with the web. But what exactly is Web 3.0, and what sets it apart from its predecessors? Web 3.0 represents a shift away from the centralized architecture of the current internet, towards a decentralized and more open network. While Web 2.0 was a great improvement to Web 1.0, it introduced a new set of problems. With the rise of Web 2.0, user-generated content and social media, our personal data is now being collected, analyzed, and monetized by large tech companies. Web 3.0 aims to solve this problem, lack of privacy and control over personal data in the current internet. Web 3.0 aims to put users back in control of their personal data by allowing them to own and manage it in a secure and decentralized way. One of the key technologies behind Web 3.0 is blockchain. Blockchain provides a secure, transparent, and decentralized way of storing and exchanging data and value. With blockchain, data is stored on a distributed ledger, making it virtually impossible to manipulate or tamper with. Another defining feature of Web 3.0 is the semantic web. The semantic web aims to make the web more machine-readable and intelligent, so that computers can understand and process the data on the web in a meaningful way. This will enable new applications and services that were previously not possible on the current internet. So what does Web 3.0 mean for us? Decentralized applications. With the rise of blockchain and decentralized platforms, Web 3.0 will enable the creation of decentralized applications that are secure, transparent, and open. Own your data. Web 3.0 will give users complete control over their personal data. They will be able to store it in a secure and decentralized way, and choose who can access it and how it can be used. A more intelligent web. With the semantic web, Web 3.0 will bring about a more intelligent and machine-readable web. This will enable new applications and services that were previously not possible on the current internet. In conclusion, Web 3.0 represents a major shift in the way we interact with the web. With the rise of blockchain, decentralized platforms, and the semantic web, Web 3.0 will bring about a more secure, transparent, and open internet, where users are in control of their personal data. 
It's an exciting time to be a part of the web, and the possibilities that Web 3.0 brings are virtually limitless. On a side note, you might think where does these names come from? Who names them Web 1.0, Web 2.0, and Web 3.0? The terms Web 1.0, Web 2.0 and Web 3.0 were not officially defined or coined by any specific organization or individual. Instead, they emerged as informal labels used by tech experts, bloggers, and industry observers to describe different stages in the evolution of the web. And there you have it, a comprehensive overview of the evolution of the internet from Web 1.0 to Web 3.0. It's amazing to see how far the internet has come in terms of interactivity, accessibility, and decentralization. With Web 3.0, we have the potential to shape a more equitable and secure internet that empowers users and creates new opportunities for growth and innovation. So, whether you're a content creator, a business owner, or just a casual internet user, it's important to stay informed about the latest developments in the world of the web. Understanding the differences between Web 2.0 and Web 3.0 can help you make better decisions and take advantage of the new opportunities that this technology has to offer. Thanks for watching and until next time, stay curious and stay connected.